hey, I see a potential big storm coming. So everybody, we want to bring you a quick tropical update. Things are starting to get active in the Atlantic. Since the uh, tropics is going to be the big topic the next several weeks now. I am worried about the tropics. So we'll call this the new reality show, Real Tropics of the Atlantic. There is uh, interesting stuff on the weather map, you know, a lot of potential out there. What do you got for me? Good morning, folks. Are you cool? Hey, everybody. It's a heads up. Because I'm going to be dropping some hard Thor new science upon you. Stay cool. Hit the button, baby. Oh, uh, wait. Let's push this button. Well, this is space. There's space all over the place. Hell yeah! We're flying now! Thor News presents... Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. We got three tropical storms, potential hurricanes in the Atlantic, and it looks like either 99 Invest L or 90 Invest L has a chance to zip up to the East Coast on a frozen rope and splatter it with lots of severe weather. So get ready and stay aware. Be cool. If you're in the Gulf Coast of Mexico or along the Atlantic coast, you better be paying attention. Equator is literally heating up, making things bubble badly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Asteroid Fight Club, Weird Weather Watch, Cyclone, Typhoon, Hurricane, Equatorial, Electro Jet, Grace, Jet Rink, Crazy, Climate Chaos, Frankenstein, Godzilla, Bunk, Recap. For a while, I've been saying, when the sun freaks out, the weather freaks out, and people freak out, and the sun's been freaking out, and the weather's been freaking out, and people have been freaking out, and then all the hurricane experts were like, remember our hurricane season forecast that we said would be active? We are upgrading it in the middle of the season to say it's going to be very active. And now, here we are, week three of August, week three of August 2016, one of the hottest, most humid summers of all time. And it's looking real deal, holy field, action Jackson in the Atlantic. Looks like pure madness over in the Asian Pacific Ocean. You see, hurricane, typhoon, cyclone season is heating up all across the globe. We've got big ocean storms overpopulating the Indian Ocean. The jet stream is out of control and the clouds seem to be on heavy drugs and totally freaking out. And over and over off Africa, storms roll off the African atmospheric conveyor belt and they ship out west towards the, towards the American Atlantic coast. The forecast seems to foretell a fast fading Fiona. Well, wait, we've got two waves to watch. All eyes are on Invest 99L. Potential Hurricane Gaston has all the tools to be a big blue chipper USA landfalling, USA coastal landfalling hurricane. Because Gaston has all the tools to be a big blue chipper USA coastal landfalling hurricane. Followed up by Invest 100L. Talking about a big wet strike twice. A weather double shot. The equator is quite active across the globe. Hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones are kind of like Earth's sunspots. Is there a correlation? Heck, yizzle, bizzle. Um, yeah, so we still got Gulf of Mexico moisture rip roaring through the middle of America and out the east and out the northeast. We got drought and wildfires in California. Strange days indeed. Tropical storm Fiona will not hold on to its title much longer. The Atlantic's the Atlantic sixth name storm of 2016 was expected to be downgraded to a tropical depression this weekend as it moved northwest in the central Atlantic. Meanwhile, to its southeast were two new tropical waves, both with decent chances of development. At least one of them could affect the Caribbean next week. That looks like Betty. Boom, boom. Wet weather. Trouble. Be aware. Be prepared. And always get to higher ground when need be. Forecasters said 99L could organize and develop into a tropical depression by the middle of next week. Why you down, bro? The next name on the list is Gaston. Oh, because you got a goofy name? Don't let that get you down, Gaston. But it does sound like you have a ton of gas. Everybody's saying Fiona's down for the count, but I don't know. It looks like she might make it to America. She just might be all road hard and put up wet. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Peace out. Have a good Saturday. Stay cool. I'm proud of us. Looks like we made it through the summer. And this is one hell of a summer, man. All right, internets, high five, internets, group hug now. Peace out. God bless everyone. And this is where these waves of energy come, and they very often will turn into tropical systems. Three things to mention. First, Fiona. It is going to go up into the Atlantic and kind of die out. I'm not worried about Fiona, just not. Then we've got one invest area, another one as this area of low pressure moves off of Africa. The bigger areas of concern right now are the two invests that we have way behind it. It's this system that we've got to worry about. This is the one that we've got to keep a closer eye on because it at least has more of a potential to end up as something that could affect the United States. This is the one we got to watch, okay? The GFS model wants to take it, really blow it up and head it up that direction. The other models tend to take it down this direction. In any case, this is the next one to watch for development. They're already investigating it. 
and we're looking at Invest 99L. So you're getting a lot of chatter since it first came into play. It did look good for a hot minute, uh, but now it's more like a hot mess. I think we're looking at a system that starts getting its act together Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is the heat, ocean heat content, you know? Once you get over in this area, look at all that heat sitting there, you know, especially in the Caribbean. Whew, boy. But we're a little bit more bullish on this Invest 90L. And it's near the coast of Africa. And this one could actually develop first. If it does, it would get the name Gaston. 90L has a 90% chance of developing. And that one is going to be heading out into the Central Atlantic, at least initially. And this one is the one that bears watching, we believe, a little more than the other. But I really believe we've got a system to really watch. It's this. And by the time we get into Wednesday, it's got a fork in the road. Atlantic, Caribbean. I could see either or. I am worried about the tropics. You always have to worry about the end of August. Absolutely. And there's usually two impulses. Late August into the first week of September, second week of September through the end of the month. You tend to have two pulses. We may be going into the full first pulse. However, this system which is around in here, early next week, I think things become more favorable, the water's plenty warm enough, and then we're worried about development. I don't worry about models, especially the tropical models. I, I just think they're garbage, I really do. The question is, where's it going? Is it an Atlantic or is it a Caribbean storm? This system has a fork in the ro road to take Wednesday and a Thursday. Is it up or is it in here? I think push comes to shove. This is probably a Caribbean system, but I'm telling you, I cannot rule out a system that takes a track at some point Thursday into the Atlantic or it could stay into the Caribbean. Close call. Now. But what I'm trying to get at and what we've been trying to tell you since the beginning of the summer is that the atmosphere is ready for a big hurricane this year. I don't know if it's going to be going up the eastern seaboard or hitting Florida or hitting the Gulf Coast states or just staying away from the United States. I don't know that right And based on all the experts here at AccuWeather, we've been really concerned that there's going to be some kind of major hurricane this year because heat content in the ocean is very hot. We're transitioning from El Nino to La Nina and everything's just kind of sitting there waiting to go for a big storm. And this, you know, the, the GFS is seeing the same thing. It's saying, this might not be the storm. I don't know. It could be the third or fourth one down the line. I don't know. If you're in these coastal areas of the Carolinas and Florida and the Gulf Coast, you need to understand that a storm of that magnitude is possible. Okay? So you need to be doing the things you need to do now to prepare for uh, such a storm. That's the point. Okay? Take it for what it's worth. Got to watch um, any kind of development for next week here along the southeast coast in the Gulf of Mexico with his big highs coming down. So, with that, let's go on. I got another rant coming. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just walked in the office this morning on a, you know, not in a bad mood. Just just look at the weather going, man, what is going on anymore? Come on, dudes. Really? <sighs> Sunday. Nothing. <laughs> a headache. A lot of heat and humidity. You at least put you have you have a category called marginal. All right, just put that. <laughs> it's gonna be thunderstorms. <laughs> all right, it's gonna be thunderstorms here. There's probably gonna be severe weather up across the Northeast, all the way down into Pennsylvania, down to my house, everything else on Sunday. You 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 you, you know. August negative till the troughs always produce severe weather, especially when you get all this heat and humidity out ahead of it. You know, you don't even put a marginal. It's like, this is like so stupid. It's like, God, sorry. I'm just like, you know, it's my tax dollars here. That's my opinion as a weather forecaster because I've been doing this stuff for 30 years. I like this. This earth kind of like moves back and forth. Okay. Where's my pencil? My pencil. Oh my goodness gracious, I gotta cut my grass this weekend. Oh man.